But despite what many Roman Catholics say, many, not all, but many early church fathers understood this truth. The Bible teaches that we are not justified by works. We are justified by faith alone in Jesus Christ. In fact, how did the Reformers, how did Martin Luther, how did John Calvin come to the conclusion? They read the church fathers. They read the New Testament. Here's what First Clement says. A lot of there's this kind of the Roman Catholics will say, nobody believed in justification by faith alone until Martin Luther made it up. Let's see what the early church said about some of this stuff. Here's Clement, like one of the first popes, okay? Therefore, he says, all of the Old Testament saints, they were glorified and magnified, watch this, not through themselves, as it by works, or their deeds, or righteous actions which they accomplish, but through God's will. And we, therefore, having been called through his will in Christ Jesus, we are not justified through ourselves or through our wisdom, or our understanding, or our piety, or deeds which we have accomplished in holiness of heart. But through the faith by which all those since the beginning Almighty God has justified to Him be the glory forever. Nothing we've done. It's just through faith in what Christ has done for us. That's how we're saved. Not because I'm super holy or I didn't sin enough or or I was smart enough or I was righteous enough, but through faith. Here's Polycarp, not a Pokemon. He was a disciple of John. Polycarp says this, In Jesus, we haven't seen, you believe with joy inexpressible and glorious, which many long to experience, knowing that by grace you have been saved, not by works. I mean, you can almost read Ephesians 2 here. But the will of God through Jesus Christ. Now, after we get out of the first couple hundred years, works do take on a heavy emphasis, and I think we can understand why. I mean, holiness and the doctrine of hell, they preach really well as a pastor. Right? It scares people, and it's easy to lose a focus on grace, and I think some of the early church went too far with this. But even so, we still see examples later on in the 300s. For example, here is Marius Victorinus in his commentary on Galatians. I'm not sure why he has a sword, but it looks pretty cool. This is what he said about Galatians. Faith itself alone. Martin Luther didn't make the concept up. Faith itself alone, he says, grants justification and sanctification, the process by which we are made holy. Thus, any flesh whatsoever, Jews or those from the Gentiles, is justified on the basis of faith, not works or observance of the Jewish law. It's not based on what we do. That's not what gets us into heaven. Here's Ambrosiaster. We're not really sure who he was, okay? Uh, Some thought he was Ambrose at first, but he wasn't, so we made up this new name for him, okay? Ambrosiaster, he wrote commentaries. He's one of the first ones who wrote commentaries on all of Paul's writings, Okay, he made comments in all of Paul's letters. Listen to what he says about faith alone saving us. I'm just going to do a, a snapshot here. When he was commenting on Romans 3.24, Believers are justified freely, neither because they have labored, okay, they haven't worked for it, nor because they have made a repayment, but by faith alone. Romans 4.5, How did the Jews think they were justified by the works of the law? In the same way as Abraham. Seeing Abraham was not justified by works of the law, but by faith alone alone. Therefore, there is no need of the law since the ungodly person is justified before God by faith alone. Romans 9, faith alone is laid for salvation. Romans 11, God would set only faith by which all sins may be abolished. Again, people didn't like it. They think Martin Luther made up this phrase. Well, how do you read Ambrosiaster and come to any other conclusion but that he believed we're saved by faith alone? 